This is a really nice exercise to do if you want to get on top of your finances. If you're like, I don't have a handle on my finances right now, start here. Start figuring out where your paychecks are going and have a job for every single dollar. Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are talking all about my payday routine. If you are new to my channel, hi, my name is Reza. I talk all things personal finances. So if you're into that, make sure you're subscribed down below. I did make a similar video like this last year and I just want to give an updated version because I did kind of update a few of my templates that I was using and I also bought a home last year, which was not factored into my old payday routine. So everything in this video is what I currently use today in 2020. So yeah, I want to show you guys my budget tracker, the Notion template that I have been using. I will also have it linked down below. It is completely free, so you guys can download that as well if it is resonating with you. And by the end of this video, I also want to give you my best financial tips on how I was able to pay off my student loans as well as purchase a home or at least have a down payment to purchase my home last year. So if that sounds good to you, then let's get into it. Just a bit about my situation. I know everyone's money situation is very different so this payday routine might not resonate with you might not work for you but if you are kind of in a similar situation as I am then I feel like this could help you in shaping what your payday routine might look like if that is what you are looking for so I do have a couple streams of income that I want to talk about the primary source of income that I have is my corporate job so I have been working a corporate job over the last almost 10 years now and it has been my steady paycheck for a very very long time for a while it was my only income and then over the last couple years, I've kind of been expanding my streams of income. This is still my primary source of income, even though I do have a small business, which we will get into. I get paid bi-weekly and over the last few years, my income has increased. I primarily live off of my income from my corporate job and we will be talking about that. You will see how I use that to budget and pay for all of my credit cards as well as my mortgage. And I also use that money for my savings and investments. My other source of income is YouTube. So I started YouTube in 2023 and then I think a couple months after that I was eligible to be part of the YouTube partner program. I don't make very much from YouTube. I still need to make a how much YouTube pays me video, which should be coming soon. I do want to film that eventually. Yeah, it's only like a couple hundred dollars every single month, but I try to not spend that money. So that money gets Put into my account and i immediately transfer it to a different savings account so i do have a youtube savings account but i kind of have an idea of what i want to use that money for i just don't touch it it's not part of my budget at all i think i have about like $2,500 in that account ever since I've been paid by YouTube. That is inclusive of the AdSense that YouTube pays me as well as a couple brand deals that I started doing over the last few months. The last stream of income that I have is my small business. So if you're new to my channel, I do have a stationary business that I started in 2020 and have been bootstrapping and kind of trying to get it off of the ground since then. It has generated over six figures over the last four years. And I would say there was a time where I wasn't really making any money. I was mostly putting money into it instead of actually getting anything back. I would say for a long time I was investing money into it. I still do, but now I'm actually making some sort of profit from it. This source of income is totally separate from my personal spending. I don't take anything from my small business. Everything stays within that business account and anything that I make is saved for taxes, saved for any expenses that are coming up. So yeah, you will not see anything to do with the line and my small business in this video because I don't pay myself from that at all. Next, I want to talk about how I spend my money and I primarily use credit cards. So I have three credit cards that I use. The first one is a platinum card that is specifically for my business. So anything to do with business related things, I use that platinum card. The other one is my cobalt card. This is my everyday spending cards, groceries, dining out, when I'm booking personal flights, shopping, hobbies, those types of things just goes into my cobalt card. And then for places that does not take American Express, I do have an emergency MasterCard by Neo. I call it my emergency credit card because I don't use it unless a place doesn't take American Express. I primarily use my Cobalt card for everything. If you guys don't have a Cobalt card and you live in North America, I highly recommend looking into that. Or if you're just in the market for a new like everyday spending credit card, I would recommend the Cobalt card. It has, I would say the best 
point system. So the reason why I wanted to give you guys that context is because when we are budgeting my paycheck, you will see that I do try to pay off my credit cards in full and it just makes it really easy and seamless for me to know which credit cards to pay off at what times. And I'm also very aware of their deadlines so that I don't incur any interest. Okay, before we start talking about my take home pay, I do wanna talk about what that term means. So when I get my paycheck every Friday from my corporate job, I do get an amount in my account and that is everything that I can play with minus the taxes, minus any sort of health insurance that I have through them. So I wanna talk about all of the deductions that get taken from my actual pay and how we get to that final take home pay number. So I've got my pay statement here, I'm just looking down. The biggest deduction that comes out of my paycheck is taxes. So I did pay $1,131.38 in taxes for this particular paycheck. I also have health insurance which was $18.38. I have dental insurance, which was $9.54 that I paid for. And I made two contributions. One is for my RRSP. If you are not from Canada, this is our retirement savings plan. So I contributed $301.29 to my RRSP from this specific paycheck. So you'll see later on, I don't put anything in my RRSP. After my take home pay, I do it before and I do it through my corporate job. So I put around $300 in there every single paycheck. And that is also matched by my company. I think the match is 6%. So whatever I'm putting in there, matching 6% of that. And then the last contribution that I make that comes off of my paycheck is my employee stock plan. So we do have an opportunity to purchase stocks and that is also matched by them. So I put down $451.94 for my employee stock and then they match 9% of that. I'm pretty sure it's 9%. So when all the deductions get taken out, my final take home pay is $3,076.08. The total deductions was $1,945.46. So if we add all of that together, actually the number should be in here. My gross income is $5,021.54 minus all of the deductions that I mentioned, then my take home pay is $3,076.08. So I hope that all makes sense. And if you have any questions, let me know down below. So what that means is we have that amount of money to play around with and kind of budget in certain areas of my life. I have a very, I don't know, this has been my routine for the last few months. I always kind of go in this order. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. It has proven to be the best strategy for me. I always like to come into payday with a plan because if I don't have a plan, I am the type of person who would see money in my account just sitting there and I would go spend it. So I don't want that to happen. So before I even get to Friday, before payday, I know exactly where that $3,000 is going to go and whether that's savings, whether that's paying off a credit card. So let's get right into that. Welcome to my Notion template. Again, I will be looking down just so that I am referencing this template with you guys. So this is what I use to budget my paycheck every single pay. And I will have this link down below. As I mentioned, it's totally free if you guys wanted to download it for yourself. So on the left-hand side here, you will see this is where my income section is. And I just inputted the number that we are working off of, which is $3,076. And with this tracker, you are able to add different sources of income. So if you budget many different types of incomes, you can just continue to add new rows here and add what they are. And you can also select a category as well. On the right hand side, these are all of the places where my paycheck goes. So I will go through them one by one. Got a TFSA investment account. I have an emergency fund. I've got a Cobalt card, American Express. I also have a platinum card and I have my mortgage in here as well as my emergency MasterCard that I was talking about. And then just below, you will see these are the different types of categories for my income and then the different types of accounts that I have. So as I mentioned, business credit card, personal credit card, home, and my investing account as well as my savings accounts. And then at the bottom of this template, you will also see a calendar. So in this calendar, I find this super helpful. This is where I input all of the due dates that I have going on for each of the things. So you can see that my Amex Cobalt card is due on the 14th and my Platinum is due on the 22nd. I also have insurance that comes out 
on the 22nd. I've got my MasterCard due on the 29th. And then I also note down my payday as well as when my mortgage is due. So this is like an all encompassing sort of one document where I can reference when things are coming in and out of my account, which is amazing to kind of keep track and make sure you're on top of things. Okay, so scrolling back up here, this is what I do when I budget my paycheck. So as I mentioned, I would put in the amount of money that I am getting into my account every Friday. And I would just note down that it is from my salary. And then what I like to do on the expenses and savings section is write down every single place where my money needs to go to. So as I mentioned, we've got investing, savings account, my various credit cards, as well as my mortgage. Next to that, we've got the amount that I would like to put into those accounts, the due date itself, and then just whatever category it is for reference. So how I budget my paycheck, I like to have that number in my mind of my income. So first things first, I always, always, always pay myself first. This is my number one finance tip for you guys, whether it is a small amount or a big amount, whatever that looks like, I would say that this is an essential first step. First of all, it builds consistency and a promise to yourself that you're not gonna break. And it also makes you think about paying yourself first as almost like a bill that you have to pay. So always making sure that you are paying yourself first is my number one tip. How I do that for myself is I have committed to myself that I am putting down $300 into my investing account every single paycheck. There are no excuses. I always do that. And I always put $100 into my emergency fund. So however much my paycheck is, I'm always allocating $300 for investing and also $100 into my emergency fund. And I never break this promise to myself. So once that money leaves my account, I am able to check it off here as well, which feels really, really nice. I have these two set up for auto pay. So I don't even need to think about it. I just know that the money is going to leave my account and $400 is no longer with me. The very next thing that I do is look at my credit card bills and also look at what time of the month I'm in. So right now I'm in the middle of the month. I have already paid off my American Express Cobalt card, which is why I put next month's due date here. I am not prioritizing that account right now, even though there is a balance there. So then I go into the next most prevalent credit card that needs to be paid off, which is my platinum card. So that is due on the 22nd and I have a very high credit card bill for that. I think this covers half of it. The reason why I have a high credit card bill for my business credit card is because I have booked a trip for my business. I'm so excited and I can't wait to share more with you guys, but for now I'm not able to say too much. Right now my priority is to pay off this bill. I'm not gonna incur any interest with this because right now my credit card bill is fully paid off. So technically it is paying ahead of time. Right now I think I have 3,500 sitting in my platinum card. That is technically due on September 22nd. So. I have a few paychecks that I can use to pay off that total amount. So right now I'm allocating 1500 for this paycheck and then next paycheck I'll allocate another 1500 and then the following one after that I can allocate 500 to pay off the whole thing. So there is not really a concern right now, but I know it is a high credit card bill and I'm just kind of mindful that this is my priority uh, that I need to pay off soon. The next one is my mortgage. This one should actually be higher than the credit cards because this is also a non-negotiable. My mortgage comes out of my account every single Friday and I need to pay $813 every single paycheck. And then the last one is my emergency credit card, which is my MasterCard. As I mentioned, this is not my primary credit card that I use, so that's why the amounts are lower. This is the full balance and it is due on the 29th. So I do have to pay this in this paycheck because otherwise I would incur interest. And that's why it's really important to have the due date next to it so that I'm mindful of when things are coming out of my account. And then at the bottom, you will see how much that total is, which is still under the income amount, which is amazing. I feel like when I do this exercise of trying to figure out where I'm putting my money every single paycheck, it's a little bit of like a Tetris of like, okay, when is this credit card due? When can I pay all of it off versus when can I pay some of it off? So I really actually quite enjoy this process so that I'm mindful of what I'm spending on. Right now, I know that I have a really high credit card bill for my business account. And because of that, I'm not shopping as much. Like I feel like this August and you'll see it in my 
breakdown of my budget at the end of this month, I feel like I haven't really shopped a lot because I know that I've just booked flights and hotels and I need to prioritize paying that off before going crazy on shopping. So this is a really nice exercise to do if you want to get on top of your finances. If you're like, I don't have a handle on my finances right now, start here. Start figuring out where your paychecks are going and have a job for every single dollar. I should also put a disclaimer here that I don't just leave a couple dollars into my checking account. I mean, I'm sure there are things that might come out that I was like, whoa, I didn't expect that. For sure, that can happen. So I like to leave maybe 100 to $300 into my checking account, which is what's in there right now. But I think the idea of having a job for every single dollar that comes into your account still stands. Like, don't leave like $500 laying around and be like, I don't know what to do with this because I feel like if that was me, I might go shopping with it because I just have like the subconscious thing of like, oh, there's money in there that can be used for anything. Let me go shop with it. So if you feel that way, I do recommend having a sort of job for every dollar in your account. So that is my payday routine. I do want to give you guys some tips on what helped me kind of build up my wealth over the last few years and what I feel like has worked for me. The first one I've already mentioned is paying yourself first. I have used that strategy ever since I had a corporate job. I guess I was lucky in that sense of like, I always knew to put aside some money for myself for the future. And that just compounded over the many years of investing. And that is actually what allowed me to even save up enough money to start my own business and as that money comes in, you can reinvest things back into the business. So I would say putting aside 50, 100, or whatever that looks like for you, I think the biggest thing is being consistent with it. So if you decide it's $50 every paycheck, don't ever miss that. Like make a commitment to yourself and don't break it. And maybe in the next year, you can increase that to another $50 or another $100, whatever you feel comfortable with. Don't make it so that it feels unachievable make a goal for yourself that you're like, I can do this and I can be consistent with it. And then you can look back over the years and realize you've actually been saving almost passively because it's always just been part of your payday routine to give yourself $50 or an extra $100 on the side and invest it for yourself. The other thing is employer matching. If you guys work a corporate job, it is so important because that is basically free money. I'm so lucky because we do have employer matching and I feel like that has increased my saving by so much because not only am I putting money in there every paycheck, they're also putting money in there every paycheck. So if you can maximize employer matching, if that is something available to you, I would also highly recommend that. And then one last tip I would say is if you have any sort of student loan debt or consumer debt, prioritize that. And the reason why I want you guys to prioritize that is primarily for your emotional and mental well-being. Personally for myself, if I have debt looming over me, I kind of have this feeling of lack and I don't like that. And I try not to live in that sense of lack. I like to live in abundance and knowing that many more things are to come. So that is my full payday routine. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It really supports the channel. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below and make sure to download that notion template for free it will be in my description box and i will see you all in my next video bye you guys